Our guest for this week's Touch Base in Seoul is Tyler Rash, an American who's become a well-known TV personality here in Korea. He's appeared on various talk shows, stunning audiences with his impeccable Korean, and as an international relations graduate as well, bringing insightful thoughts to any conversation. There is much we could discuss with Mr. Rash, but today we'll focus on a new book he has published in Korean. It's a collection of essays called 두 번째 지구는 없다, which could be tra- roughly translated as There is no second earth, and it tackles issues about the environment and climate change. Let's bring him in now. Mr. Rash, it's great to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. So can you tell us about this book, 두 번째 지구는 없다? I'm not sure if there's an official English title uh. or not. <laughs> uh, we've translated to There is no second earth, although our producer yeah. came up with a suggestion There is no planet B. Right, yeah. So there's no actual English title for the book at this point, um, because I wrote it in Korean mm. and the whole process was done in Korean. So, um, But yeah, you could translate it as there's no second Earth, there's no planet B. The main point is there's no other option <laughs> for mm. what we have. So. We only have one Earth. We have to make Correct. sure we treat it right. Right. So can you tell us about what's in sure. the book? Well, it's a series of essays. Um, so, I mean... M- Most environment-oriented books tend to be sort of projections or ideas of what kind of climate model may occur if, you know, the average temperature of the Earth raises by one degree centigrade or four degrees centigrade or what may have it. But Mm. that kind of approach is definitely very helpful, but I also feel that it's important to sort of bring it you know, to us as, as human beings, you know, right. in a way that we can sort of more easily under, understand it. Because really the environmental issue, the global climate crisis is just so complicated and overwhelming. Mm. So it's a series of essays uh, about what I think about the global climate crisis. And it also includes sort of a perspective that I have on the environment and nature in general. Mm. I grew up in a really rural, very... Um, heavily forested uh, area of the United States called Vermont, and it's very environmentally conscious. And so I tried to bring that perspective to the conversation through these essays as well. Right. So the essays are aimed at everyday people then here in Korea. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a climate expert in any way. Um, I wasn't really that great at science class. Um, But, you know, it's gotten to the point where it's a topic that you can't not be interested in. Right. Right? Because the climate crisis, really, it's about your future. Are you going... What? Where will you be five Mm. years from now? Well, where will you be 10 years from now? That house that you're imagining that you're living in, is that a house that you'll actually be able to afford? Or will you not be able to get flood insurance in that area? You know, maybe something will happen and you'll wind up not being able to get a loan anymore. Like, this, it's actually a real thing, right, that we're facing. When did you first get interested in these environmental issues? Well, I think growing up in Vermont for me sort of provided me with a very natural way of becoming interested in the vi- in the environment in general. Mm. Whenever we would have a class about, you know, a, a bio class or a, a chemistry class, we would go outside into the woods, measure the pH of the soil under pine trees and then under oak trees and then, you know, ask ourselves why. And then this conversation would get into, you know, the local flora and fauna and like how that relate. you know, it's just all super interconnected in the way that I was educated as a child. And so even your English class, you know, we would be reading, you know, Thoreau or, you know, something that that is relatively um, naturalist in a way, like um, Edward Abbey, or there's a lot of American literature Mm. that is related to nature. And so they would include that in the curriculum at the same time as you're studying about the environment. So it's really heavily integrated. So I naturally became interested in the environment, but it eventually got to the point where I felt like I really needed to just talk about it more publicly. Okay. Because um, some of the things you are talking about earlier was when yeah. you were much younger. Correct. Right. But then how do you... Everyone's... I think nowadays there's yeah. a lot of people who are interested in the environment and some of right. the causes and some of the issues that we have to face and look up forward to in the future. Mm-hmm. But then taking that and deciding to actually write a book about it is a right. different step. This is true. I, I ran into a few... Mo- there were a few defining moments, I feel, for mm. myself. Um, you know... I, I've always I've always felt that this climate issue is really important to my life. Mm. Um, but there were specific moments where if I spoke very emotively about that or said we need to actually 
change things, then sometimes you know you run into some sort of friction or or some you know people who don't necessarily agree sure. with you. Mm. Um, and I think those moments brought me to really feel like I had to physically do something mm. different. So specifically speaking, um, the air quality issue mm. here in South Korea. Of course, it's a very um, pressing issue. It's very problematic. Mm. And this year it hasn't been as bad as it had in past years. Um, however, when I first moved here in 2011, it quickly, you know, even from that first year, you know, you got into 2014, 15, 16, and it started getting really, really bad. Mm. But any conversation about that was highly politically charged. It was difficult to really address the fundamentals of the issue. And so I started to get very frustrated with the way that conversation was happening. Mm. Why is a conversation about our future and our health and the world that we live in constantly being put in a political box, Mm. a conversation about which country are you from? Well, you should go back there. You know, everything's interconnected when it comes to the environment. Mm. Just because you're in South Korea doesn't mean that you don't have anything to do with the type of pollution that we're seeing in the world coming out of China or the United States. You know, where is your phone from? Where was your phone made? You know, it's not made down the street. Mm. You know, the parts of that phone are made all over the world. So no matter where you are, everything's interconnected. We all need to be aware talking Mm. about it. You don't have to be perfect to talk about it. You don't have to be a specific place from a specific place to talk about it. It's related to everybody. So that really sort of started to aggravate me Mm. in the way that people would sometimes respond to my concerns. Another moment was I really wanted to write a book in general. Mm. Um, I had received multiple offers and every time I wanted to make sure that we were writing on, you know, using somewhat environmentally friendly paper like FSC for Forestry Stewardship Council paper um, or using plant based inks, something a little bit different. Mm. Right. But I kept running into walls with that. And many uh, publishers here in South Korea would tell me, oh, they can't do that in Korea. Oh, there aren't any printing houses that can print that way. Mm. But I know for a fact that Korea prints books on FSC paper and actually exports it to other countries. So there are mm. definitely printing houses who do it. Why am I running into this question? You know, so I d- originally didn't want to write about the environment then. I wanted to write about language. I wanted to write about culture. But the fact that I'm running into this wall where people don't see that as right. important or completely mm. resistant made me even more passionate about writing a book about the environment. And that's when Tubonte Jigunapta, There's No Second Earth, became something that I really wanted to do. It's almost about the practice of questioning uh, yes. yeah. why, you know, why we can't do things in a certain way. Getting right. used to the idea of always asking how is this going to impact the environment. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably uh, one of the points that you wanted to make as well. How have people reacted to the book so far? After the book came out, the reaction has been extremely positive. And there's... Uh, what's the best way to explain this? Before the book came out, the there was sort of... A big question mark next Mm. to it. You know, a lot of people thought that, oh, you know, a book about the environment, that's not going to sell in Korea, (laughs) you know, or, you know, nobody's going to like it because there's not enough color on the front of the book because we specifically decided to use less ink and Mm. go with a minimalistic Mm. design. So many people felt that, you know, oh, this is not going to work. But it did. And surprisingly, many people have been very interested in the book. They've been impressed by how it's actually made in an environmentally friendly way. Mm. They love the design. They love what it says. They love the fact that what it's trying to convey in terms of message is also portrayed in the book itself and how Mm. it's made. So there's been a great response. Um, I think yesterday we were uh, number four on the charts at uh, a very large bookstore here for... for, um, social science books, uh, which is quite impressive. <laughs> so, Do you think yeah. that perhaps shows the changing awareness and attitudes here in Korea about environmental issues over the time, over the last few years? Absolutely. Mm. Um, I think that if I were to have published this book two years ago, three years ago, people would be like, what are you doing? You know, why <laughs> do you think you should be talking about this? I think many people would have responded that way. Mm. But, you know, over the past two years, you know, with... Um, Greta Thunberg and, you know, sort of the just global change that we've been experiencing. Mm. Greta Thunberg. 
Yeah. Yes, Christian right. Bale. Yes, yes. And the so Swedish, uh, the Swedish. Yes. How should we call it? Environmental activist, seventeen-year-old. Yes, yes, exactly. I think mm. that many people's sort of worldview has started to change over the past two years, and so the reception, you know, people were ready to receive this kind of conversation, and they've also wanted to see something different. Mm. I think a lot of Korean people actually really want to see more environmentally friendly products, and there have been many cases in you know consumer history here that that show that you know. Whether that's for health reasons or environmental reasons, mm. but um, I think people are really ready for that. Mm. And unfortunately, companies have not produced a lot of it. But in situations like this, with t u b o n t e j i g u n a p t a even if you know people tell you, "Oh, you can't make an environmentally friendly book. We don't print that way." You know, even if you if you decide to <laughs> sure. push through to the end. Mm. The response will be positive because people are ready for that kind of change. I think in the past it would have been seen as a scientific uh, right. field, but now it's become more of a societal, even philosophical uh, field to talk right. about this. Anyone can really talk about this and have right. thoughts on this and drive the conversation forward. Mm. You have been involved in environmental activities for a few years. I understand you're the brand ambassador for the World Wildlife Fund (WWF) right. since 2016. How did that come about? So WWF entered South Korea, I think, in 2014 or 2015, which is a similar time frame as I started doing TV work here. Mm. And I actually met someone who works in their marketing department, who was heading their marketing department at a friend of mine's like wine party, and we <laughs> okay. got into this conversation. Mm. Um, about how cool WWF is, mm. and they were looking for a partner who could help sort of get the word out about WWF because not many Koreans were aware of, mm. of how advanced and how much work they're doing mm. around the world. So I was all in on that, and I was like, "Hey, yeah, <laughs> count me in if you need me to do anything." So at that point. Um, You know, I've been talking about what they do at their organization, bringing more attention to the environment and climate change on TV and lectures and through this book. So a perfect marriage of yeah. two sides that needed each other, I guess. Here. Correct. Finally, then, what are your plans for the future when it comes to tackling more environmental issues? Do you have more plans to do uh, this sort of work? And uh, for our fans as well, for our fans of uh, Tyler, mm -hmm. you. Is there, is there any other exciting plans that you can tell us about? Yeah, in terms of the environment, I think it's really important that we force ourselves into a situation where we have to do things in a more environmentally friendly way. So, for example, with this book being printed on FSC paper and with um, plant-based inks, I've made a promise that I am not going to publish any other book. If it's not printed on those standards, wow! So that's my new rule. Mm -mm. And then I want to create more rules like this and get more people on board with me. I don't want to be writing any more paper contracts ever, because in South Korea, an online contract has exactly the same legal um, power as mm. uh, any paper contract. There's no need to sign paper. So I want to find more and more of these things that I can implement and force myself and force other people to do alongside me, so that we can create more structural change for the environment. Well, it was great to have you on the show today, and congratulations on the book. We've been speaking to Tyler Rash, TV personality, and we can probably say now environmental activist. Thank you for your time today. <laughs> Thank you.